this video, we're talking about how to find the equation of a tangent line to a particular function at a specific point. And in this particular problem, we have the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 raised to the fifth power times quantity x plus 1. And we've been asked to find the equation of the tangent line to this function at the point x equals 1. So remember that the tangent line is just the equation that intersects the graph at exactly one point, which is different than the secant line, which will intersect the graph at two or more points. The tangent line just skims across the function, intersecting it at exactly one point. Well, that one point that we're interested in is the point x equals 1. So at x equals 1, what is the equation of the tangent line? You can find the equation of the tangent line at any value for x as long as the function is defined and continuous there. So in this particular case, we're looking for the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So how are we going to do that? Well, here we have the formula in point-slope form for the equation of a line. And remember, in point-slope form here, we have three values that we need to pay attention to. First of all, the value of m. That's the slope of the line defined by this equation. And then we have the values x sub 1 and y sub 1. And these two together are a point on the line. So x sub 1 comma y sub 1 is a point on the line. Well, we've already been told that the point on the line we're interested in is the point at x equals 1. So we just need to find the corresponding value of y, which we can do by plugging x equals 1 into the original function. Because when we plug x equals 1 into the function, we're going to find the value of the function at that point, the y value at that point. So we're going to go ahead and say f of 1 because x is equal to 1. So f of 1 is going to be, and then we're just going to plug in 1. So here we'll get 2 times 1 minus 1 raised to the fifth power times 1 plus 1. And now we just need to solve for this value. So we'll have here 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, 1 to the fifth power is just 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 1 times 2, or just 2, which means that we're interested in the point 1 2 because x is 1 and y is 2. So this x sub 1, y sub 1 coordinate point is the point 1, 2. So we already have those values. The only value we need now is m. And m is just the derivative of the original function evaluated at the point that we found. So all we have to do is take the derivative, and we'll call the derivative f prime of x because the original function is f of x so the derivative is f prime so f prime of x is going to be equal to and now we need to take the derivative of this function well we're going to need to use product rule in order to take the derivative because we have the product here of two functions the first one is this 2x minus 1 to the fifth the second one is this quantity x plus 1. So we have two functions that are multiplied together. And so in order to use product rule, product rule tells us we take the derivative of the first function. So the derivative of 2x minus 1 quantity to the fifth power is going to be 5 times 2x minus 1 raised to the fourth, then we have to multiply by 2. And the reason that this is the derivative of 2x minus 1 to the fifth is because we use chain rule. So to use chain rule, we bring the exponent, the 5, out in front. So we get the 5 out in front here. We're taking the derivative of the outside function, leaving this inside function completely untouched, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So 5 minus 1 gives us 4. But we just took the derivative of the outside function. We didn't deal with the inside function 2x minus 1 yet. So then chain rule tells us that we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So this inside function is 2x minus 1. The derivative of 2x minus 1 is 2. So we have to multiply by 2. And that's the derivative of what we've underlined here in purple. But then product rule tells us we're taking the derivative of this. Whatever we get, we multiply by the other function without doing anything to it. So we're going to multiply by x plus 1. But then we have to add to that the opposite scenario. So here we took the derivative of the first function and we left the second function alone. Now we're going to leave the first function alone. So we're going to leave 2x minus 1 to the fifth power alone. And we're going to take the derivative of x plus 1. So the derivative of x plus 1 is 1. So we have to multiply this by 1. And now we just want to simplify. So here we're going to move this 2 to the front. And we're going to get 10 times 2x minus 1 to the fourth times quantity x plus 1. And then here multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value. So we just have plus 2x minus 1 to the fifth. Now we could leave the equation like this, or if we wanted to, we could factor out a 2x minus 1 to the fourth. I'll go ahead and do that just to make it a little cleaner. So we're going to have 2x minus 1 raised to the fourth power multiplied by 
10 times quantity x plus 1, which is what's left over when we pull the 2x minus 1 to the fourth power out of this first term. And then here we're just left with one factor of 2x minus 1, so we can just say 2x minus 1. Now we'll distribute the 10 across the x plus 1, and then we'll combine like terms here in this second set of parentheses. So 10x plus 2x gives us 12x, and 10 minus 1 is 9, so we'll get 12x plus 9. And we'll rewrite the derivative function as f prime of x is 2x minus 1 raised to the fourth power multiplied by 12x plus 9. Now to simplify further, we can factor a 3 out of the 12x plus 9, so we'll pull that 3 out in front and we'll say 3 times 2x minus 1 raised to the fourth power times 4x plus 3. And now we've simplified the derivative function as much as possible. We didn't need to do that technically, but it just makes our final answer a little bit cleaner. So this is our derivative function, now we just need to evaluate it at x equals 1. So instead of f prime of x, we're going to say f prime of 1, and we're going to plug x equals 1 into the right hand side. So here we're going to have 3 times 2 times 1 minus 1 raised to the fourth power times 4 times 1 plus 3, and now we need to simplify to find the value of f prime of 1. So what we get here is 3, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 to the fourth power is still 1, so that's 1 for that first term. Here we have 4 times 1, which is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7, so we have 3 times 1 times 7, or just 21. So now this is the value m. So the derivative f prime evaluated at this particular point, x equals 1, is what we're going to use for the value of m. So now we have this value for m, and we have x sub 1 and y sub 1. So if we go ahead and box those so we know what we're doing here, we have m equals 21 going in here for m. We have x sub 1 as 1 and we have y sub 1 as 2. So we're going to plug in all three of those values using this formula here. So with this formula we're going to say y minus y sub 1 or y minus y sub 1 is 2 equal to m which we know is 21 multiplied by x minus x sub 1 or x minus 1. So x minus 1. Now we can leave our equation in this form or we can simplify it by solving for y. So in order to solve for y we'll first distribute the 21 so we'll get y minus 2 equals 21x minus 21. Then we'll add 2 to both sides to get y by itself and we'll get y equals 21x minus 19. And this then is the equation of the tangent line to this original function here f of x at the point x equals 1.